Good evening. I'll call the meeting to order at this time. If you will, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. This time, I will ask Dr. David Barber to lead us in the invocation, please. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity we have that we can come before uh, the town people, and Lord, we can uh, enact the business of the town of Smithfield. We thank you, Lord, for all those who are interested to show up, and we thank you, Lord, for the dedication of these men here and the women who are involved, and we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to serve the community for what's better for the people. I pray, Lord, right now that everything that we do and say be done in such a way that we bring uh, uh, glory to your name, first of all, but then, Lord, that we uh, do the right thing for the town of Smithfield, regardless of who they are, that we focus on the needs of the community as a whole. Again, we thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. Be with us, guide us, help us, Lord, to do the things we need to do in the right way. For us in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, gentlemen, we have the uh, agenda in front of us. I'm not uh, aware of any known changes. Is that correct, Mr. Manager? That, that's correct, sir. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't have any known changes. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So our town clerk is not with us this evening. She is out sick. So the manager is going to pull double duty tonight and is going to try to take notes. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to uh, we'll allow him enough time to capture what he needs to. Luckily, we are recording this. Mr. Manager, in case you need to go back and, and check anything tonight. All right. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. And then Mayor Pro Tem Dunn as well. He had another engagement tonight and could not make it as well. So our first presentation this evening is a proclamation honor, honoring Chief of Police Keith Powell for his 30 years of service to the town of Smithfield. Chief, if you don't mind, if you'll come to the front and whoever else you would like to bring with you. You're retired now. <laughs> Enjoy it. Exactly. All right. Again, thank you, Chief, for, for coming this evening um, in, on your day off. Um, <laughs> I, I appreciate you taking time to come back um, um, to be with us this evening. But um, I just felt like it was important to, to officially um, read this proclamation to you tonight. At last meeting, I kind of said what I thought, right? Um, but again, I want to congratulate you for your, your many years of service, your 30 years of service to the citizens of the town of Smithfield. Um, that's uh, almost, uh, it's, it's not heard of very often uh, for any employee to be with a company or an organization for that long. Uh, it just doesn't happen that much anymore. My father retired from First Citizens after 40 plus years, um, but you just don't see that much anymore. Um, but Again, I want to thank you for your service, and I want to thank your wife, and I want to thank your entire family for um, sharing him with us uh, for this uh, 30 years. Um, and, you know, just, you know, when he walked out that door, I know it wasn't easy, right? And thinking about, was he going to come home, um, or was he going to come home at least uh, safe in the same condition as when he left? Uh, but thank goodness uh, that was the case. And again, uh, we, are, we certainly appreciate your professionalism, um, uh, your leadership um, throughout, throughout the entire town, right? Not just your police duties, but, but everything. And uh, this is a man who would go out of his way no matter what, right? Um, known criminals, probably. Um, people that you knew had been in trouble with the law in, in, in the past and in current situations, you always treated them with the utmost respect, no matter what. 
and I think that goes a long way, sir. So if you will, please uh, bear with me as I read this proclamation. <clears throat> In honor of Chief of Police Robert Keith Powell's 30 years of dedicated service to the town of Smithfield. Whereas on December the 1st, 2022, Keith Powell retired from the town of Smithfield with 30 years of dedicated service. And whereas Keith Powell began his career as a patrol officer with the Smithfield Police Department in 1994. And whereas early in his career, Keith Powell functioned as the housing authority officer, which would help develop his passion for community policing and for serving all citizens equally. And whereas in addition to service, serving as a patrol officer and housing authority officer, Keith Powell served as sergeant, lieutenant, patrol commander, and captain. And whereas on October the 4th, 2016, Keith Powell was promoted to chief of police where he would lead the Smithfield Police Department through two Kalia reaccreditation processes, a national pandemic, and national unrest. And whereas throughout his career, Keith Powell earned the admiration and respect of the citizens in the town of Smithfield by volunteering at many community events and even providing food from his own garden to help feed those less fortunate. So now we do have a community garden. So, you know, in your free time now, you can come back and help us with that. And whereas with kindness, compassion, humility, and professionalism, Keith Powell imparted on his officers and peers how to be a true servant leader. And whereas Keith Powell has earned and deserves this public recognition for his many years of service and dedication to the town of Smithfield. Now, therefore, I, Andy Moore, mayor of the town of Smithfield, along with the members of the town council, express our sincere appreciation to Keith Powell for his distinguished service to the town of Smithfield, and extend our, excuse me, our sincere appreciation for his work and wish him well in future endeavors. Okay, at this time we will move on to our next presentation, the water plant update. Ted, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, thank you for letting me come and speak to you this evening. The purpose of this presentation is to update the council on a couple of items that are of concern to both Parks and Rec, as well as the general public, so everyone kind of knows where we stand and when things will return to normal. The two items I wish to update the council on are the proposed greenway reconstruction and the proposed <coughs> landscaping that faces North Street. So this is an aerial map showing how the greenway and how the reservoir used to be. The greenway is, is represented by the green line and the reservoir outlined in blue. In order to expand the reservoir, a section of the greenway had to be removed. The removed section is shown by the red line. So after completion of the reservoir expansion, the project left us with a gap in the greenway. It, may be, it seems it may be easy enough to hug the outside of the fence to reestablish the greenway in that area, but please note the shaded area just to the lower right. <coughs> These are wetland areas and are not allowed to be disturbed without permits and potential financial penalties. So what do we do? As proposed in December of 2020, the town will go around the wetland area to minimize the wetland impact 
We also, or this route remains entirely on town property north of Buffalo Creek. There's the additional advantage of use, utilizing the established Johnston County sewer easement, which will always remain free, uh, clear of trees and shrubs. <coughs> the town will likely have to remark certain mileposts along the greenway as the footages will change, but this route gets us back to the Noose River as quickly as possible and also reflects the goal that we were putting it back to as close to the original condition as practical. Landscaping. The approved plan shows a row of Leland cypress trees in front of the new fence. It may be easier to see if we add a touch of color. So the fence is the red line and the trees are the green symbols. Also, we saw a representation of this a couple of years back. That's how it will look when it's done, or at least it was proposed. A couple of changes to improve this plan are occurring. First, we have changed the plant species from Leland cypress to arborvitae. The Leland cypress is more susceptible to disease and the arborvitae has a stronger root structure. The stronger root structure is important because the trees will be placed on top of a six foot high berm that we have added to further shield the view from North Street. To accommodate that berm, we have pulled the fence back about 20 to 25 feet from its original position. It is also of note that once complete, the entrance to the parking area for Towton Field will be preserved. A little purple entrance there. <clears throat> and this is what the section of the berm would look like. So you can see it's six feet tall and eight feet wide across the top where the arbor vitae will be planted. So the timeline for these two items are both within the next 45 days. The project will be completed by the end of January and the reestablishment of the greenway should occur by the end of February, if not sooner. So the Smithfield residents can utilize the greenway in the coming spring. Thank you for your time this evening and if you have any questions or comments, I'd be happy to address them. Any questions? Ted? Okay. I have a few questions, Mayor, just real quick. Um, Mr. Credo, the, um, the red line, I think you said, indicated the original trail then the new uh, <coughs> reservoir took place. I'm on your that slide there, yeah. But uh, proposing the uh, the new the new trail was going to come up. I'm just curious if you could give us a map or, or show us where the buildings are because it's kind of hard to tell um, the new structure, the water plant, and such. Is that not even in this picture? Because, it's not even on the map, sir. Okay. And I'm curious as to how close this is to the property lines, would this actually meet the setback requirements for the Greenway rules and such? Well, we're still saying, so we're, the, the property line is not even shown on the map. We are still north of Buffalo Creek, which is 10 to 12 feet wide. Mm -hmm. um, not knowing if the Greenway needs, yeah, there's no setback necessary for a Greenway that that uh, we, we know of at this, no, Stevenson. And so, is is this uh, the a route we had discussed the route of the county's water uh, easement? Yeah, the, if you look, I know it's hard to see on a small scale. On the bigger scale, that is the county's easement coming up. So we are utilizing we are utilizing at least you know the, the goodly portion of it, and that's why we one of the big reasons we chose that route. So pretty much, if I understand this correctly, aside from the wetland, it's going to kind of remain in the wooded area. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, my other question, Mr. Credo, um, related to that, is uh, we had a we have a allocated some money for that. Are we within budget for what your cost of projection for the build out is? I haven't got a uh, exact cost yet. Uh, or the project is within budget. Yes. Um, but I haven't got an exact cost in the Greenway because up until today I didn't have an exact section. I don't know the depth of stone and asphalt, et cetera. So once I get the price, I can better answer that question. We should be, um, but I don't want to say definitely yes or no. And that will include building a bridge of some structure over that little tributary, I guess. Possibly. Yeah, we're, we're likely going that very small disturbance, which is less than 150 square feet, will likely uh, put pipe underneath it and then just walk on top of it and we'll get the uh, Corps of Engineers to sign off on it. Okay. 
And then, uh, one other question about this project. Um, would you be willing to um, share with us what the fence materials and what about the gating that we have on the cl currently permanently closed north second side? And I'm curious of what your plan is for the uh, other side, for our uh, public utilities entrance, or we call it our operations center. Right. The, as, as per the plan, the, the bulk... Um, the hospital roadside is where the bulk of all traffic, 95% or even 99% of the traffic will go up and down hospital road. This entrance will be closed ex only uh, to be used only for emergency access should the fire or police or the emergency services need to get in. So it'll remain closed 364 days of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, I know on the other side, we have a temporary sign and I know that was a planned thing I mean, looking up into budgeting, we probably should look at some way of building some type of formal entrance to the operations area or that road so people can see that it's, you know, um, you're going to do this with landscaping to try to, you know, make it look more unified. I mean, I don't even know if we probably need to get that traffic light reprogrammed too because there's no point for the period to allow traffic or get them to change it. Um, we don't ever intend on traffic going back through the water plant area? No, there, there will, the, the pathway through the plant will not meet a road standard, so it will but, never be, but, it will but, not be reopened. I think they're talking about two and there will be no traffic going through. There's no traffic light over the other side. But I think that's what he's talking mm -hmm. about. I can't hear what you're saying. I, I think the two, Ted's a little bit confused. He's talking about the second street entrance. I think you're talking about the hospital road. Well, we were, I was talking about there, both Because there's only a traffic yeah. light on the hospital road That's side, correct. Not, not on the and, second and you'll, street And side. traffic will still need to get to the operations center. It, as it does currently. Right, and it will still have to get to the garage. That's where our recycle center is and everything else. So that will still be open to traffic. Yes, right? sir. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. just not through traffic. That's correct, Mayor. Right. I understand. Right. I just yep. didn't know if we were going to have some type of formal <coughs> entrance to the operations area for, to make it look nice. Exactly. Oh. Well, that wasn't part of the project, but we well, can certainly right look at it in the coming a, budget year. We've erected well, a metal that's sign question. that's on a tripod that's been there for. Oh, yeah, we're going to take that down. Okay. That's kind of I mean, what I was. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry. That was. So I think we need to look at that. Maybe we can yes, ask sir. the, the uh, Parents Commission to help us with some ideas over there. Yeah. But, I mean, we've got to set the standard proper. So. I think, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we will move on now to our public hearings. <coughs> All right, our first public hearing, this is a quasi-judicial hearing, so anyone wishing to speak for or against this matter, uh, you need to be sworn in. So. Um, Anyone wishing to speak for this, for or against this matter, if you will, please stand now, and I'll swear you in. Man. All right. All right. The town clerk's not here, so I will. I will do it. Anyone? Anyone else? You can just stay there. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, if you will, um, let's see. Please raise your right hand. There's no one else. Okay. And uh, just. Uh, um, Listen to what I have to say, and then uh, do, you, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right. Thank you very much. All right. You can sit down and if they have yeah. questions. So our first uh, public hearing is uh, SUP 22-03. The applicant is requesting a special use permit uh, to construct and operate a private bar on property located within the B3 zoning district. The property considered for approval is located on the east side of Venture Drive, approximately 250 feet south of its intersection with Magnolia Drive, and further identified as Johnston County Tax ID 15L11009M. This time I will entertain a motion to open the public hearing. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? All right. Winsman, I'll turn it over to you, sir. All right, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, on this first slide is a picture of the building where this uh, private club or bar will be located. They're planning to use this uh, far end of the building, so this is the furthest away from Venture Drive. Um, you can see all the parking, um, so it will be in that end, end unit. 
Uh, Mayor pretty much went through this slide. Um, serving of alcohol requires a, a special use permit in the town code. So again, here's the, uh, the shopping center where the, the location is, and uh, the little air, yellow arrow points to the end unit, so it will be on that far side. Um, at, at present, it'll all be indoors. If you read through the report, there was some discussion about future, maybe outdoor lawn area for games. Um, that's not really feasible, the way the building and, and the site is configured at this time. The, the applicant would have to come back, and that's a condition of approval. They'd have to come back at a later time to um, be able to do that with you know, proper fencing and, and uh, you know, fire access has to be maintained and some other issues. So the applicant owner is G3 Tech LLC. Um, this is in town. It's a B3 zoning and it's an office strip center. So there's several different uses in there and when this uh, business will be in operation. Most of the other ones will be closed, so there'll be plenty of parking um, for the use. <clears throat> so again, in our code, it requires a special use permit for the use. The UDO has no additional standards. Venture Business Park um, is just a, a modern office <coughs> building. Um, Again, they, they're looking for outdoor seating, recreation area. Staff is recommending that any future proposed outdoor seating receive administrative site plan approval and permitting prior to the applicant being um, uh, constructing any, any changes. And uh, that would make sure that it meets, you know, ABC regulations and fire code and all those things. So the location, this is the staff's, staff's um, opinion of finding a fact, <clears throat> and to approve a special use permit, the, the seven finding a fact need to be uh, met in a, in a, um, for the use. So staff believes that this private bar at this location will not endanger the public. It's um, all within the B3 zoning district. All the properties surrounding it are B3. All public health and safety standards, including fire codes and building codes, can be met. Therefore, staff believes there will not be any detriment to the public health, safety, or welfare. The project will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of the surrounding property for uses permitted in the district. As I said, the, the building is, is in mostly an office building with a little bit of retail, and most businesses are closed um, during the prime operation of this business. Um, the development will have adequate utilities, drainage, parking, and necessary facilities. Essentially, there's lots of parking at this site. There's adequate egress and uh, ingress as required. Staff doesn't believe there'll be any adverse impacts to abutting or adjoining properties, and we believe there'll be no adverse impacts. Oh, that's a repeat. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what that will say. I have to look at my staff report. Um, so the last one, it, it will, it'll uh, conform to all uh, applicable zoning regulations. That's what the last one should say. So planning staff recommends approval of a special use permit, SUP 2203, with just the one condition, as I mentioned earlier. And do you have any questions? Any questions for planning director at this time? <clears throat> All right, uh, for the applicant, is there anything else that you would, you wish to share about the project at this time? If, no, sir? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, here in the testimony, this is a quasi-judicial hearing, right? So just have to, formality, <clears throat> have to ask these questions. So here in the testimony that uh, the planning director just gave, do you agree with the testimony that he gave? Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this matter? If so, please co come forward at this time. Okay, I'm not seeing any. All right. Um, 
If there are no questions. Mayor, I do have a couple of questions. I was, didn't know if the applicant was going to come. Just curious, um, is uh, this uh, going to be beer, wine, liquor, all the, pretty much everything? And if you will, please come, come up to the microphone, please. Yes, sir. We'll be serving all three. Okay. And did you have a menu or anything? Were y'all doing any type of food? I'm just curious. No, we hope to, uh, with uh, permits, we hope to get some uh, food trucks involved. Okay. And the last question I have, sir, and I thank you for interest in Smithfield doing business. What would your planned hours? Um, yeah. uh, 12 to 12. Okay. Um, maybe on Sunday, uh, 10 to 12. See how that goes. Okay. With, so, with the food trucks, were you finished? Yeah, yeah, thank you, sir. Thank with you. With the food trucks, would that be applicable with the other tenants in the building? Will, you, will they have enough parking for that? Or yeah. will you bring those in at, like after? Five or well, I'll 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 take a poll <laughs> and uh, see what. Yeah, because that's, that's going to be important if you're planning on food trucks. I mean, there, you need to make sure you're conscientious of the other tenants. Right, and, absolutely. Uh, I think that would be. Do you need to say something? I did want to point out, and just thinking about this out loud, if food trucks is going to be the source of the food, that requires a separate zoning permit. Yes. And I don't know if you've been informed, but. Um, you know, a food truck can't be there every day of the year. No, I understand. So it has to be food trucks rotating in. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. That's one. That was one question. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, Mayor, uh, observation: the there's been quite a bit of discussion in the past about food trucks, and in fact, the downtown area. This is a more unique area. Give them an opportunity to have a place. You know, on occasions or what have you. I'm sure y'all can work the permitting stuff out, but. I know that this has been successful in other towns, um, something very similar to that. So um, I think that's encouraging. That's all I have to say. And I wasn't opposing the food trucks. I was making sure that the tenants, <coughs> being good neighbors is what I was referring to. Good partners, I guess. Any other questions <coughs> at this time? If not, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All right. So we have the eight findings of fact. Uh, we can go through each one of those individually, or we can entertain a motion to approve those eight findings of facts and then recommend. There's a recommend, uh, recommended motion, I believe. Um, at your package. Um. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to move to approve the special use permit 22-03 uh, with one condition based on funds of facts for special use permits, and that is any future <coughs> proposed outdoor seating area receive administrative site plan approval prior to construction. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second by Councilman Rabel. And that includes all eight findings of yes, facts. Yes, it does. I'm sorry. Thank, okay. Yes, that does that. include. Mm -hmm. I, I apologize. No, that's fine. <clears throat> yep. That motion, sir. Okay. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. All right. Motion carries. Councilman Barber voting against. <clears throat> do, you, do we need a second motion or that's all? Mm -hmm. That's all that was all of it in one. Yep. Okay. Was, yeah, it, yeah, he I included it all in, in the one as a, yes, that's okay, right, for this purpose. I included all eight mm -hmm. funds of facts. I'm sorry I didn't say that initially. I think you got it right. It's good enough. <clears throat> all right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Looking forward to a new business coming, opening up. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we will now move on to our next public hearing. This is not a quasi-judicial hearing, so no need for anyone to be sworn in for this one. Um, it is RZ-2205 Highway 70, um, QOZB LLC. Uh, the applicant is requesting to rezone a 9.04 acre track of land from light industrial zoning district to heavy industrial zoning district. The property considered for rezoning approval is located on the southeast 
end of Gulfstream Court and further identified as Johnston County Tax ID 1507900 5D. This time I will entertain a motion to open the public hearing. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Stephen? Thank you. Uh, this request comes from Sanderson Engineering. They're requesting the rezoning of 9.04 acres of property at the end of Gulfstream Court from light industrial to heavy industrial for a food manufacturing use um, for the site. Oh, right one. So Gulfstream Court is uh, on the same cul-de-sac as Thomas Concrete. If you recall back, I think it was in 2017, the town council rezoned that property to heavy industrial to allow the concrete plant to come in. So this rezoning to heavy industrial will just make a larger heavy industrial district. Um, as you can tell from the map here, everything around it is industrial. And uh, the use here is, is going to be food manufacturing. The reason it's heavy industrial in the code is because sometimes food manufacturing can uh, result in odors to adjacent properties. In this case, the, the applicant said it's a, it's a protein manufacturing business and they didn't anticipate really any odors coming from the site. But nonetheless, it's a heavy industrial zoning, so now we're just making a larger heavy industrial district. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so light industrial to heavy industrial. The property is currently vacant wooded. Um, this sits in our ETJ, so it's across, uh, it's behind OPW, if you know where that is. Yep. It's in the Wilson's Mills Fire District, and Johnston County provides water and sewer, and the electric provider is Duke. <clears throat> so this first bullet point is just uh, <clears throat> highlighting that we created some changes to the table of uses, which made food manufacturing a heavy industrial use back uh, in 2021. Um, yeah, so I pretty much covered this slide in my previous. So the comprehensive plan guides this entire area as, heavy, as, as industrial, jobs related. Um, so it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan does not differentiate between light and heavy industrial. So with uh, rezoning, the town council is required to adopt a system statement and staff, staff's opinion is that this, um, comp this rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive growth management plan. It'll be consistent with the unified development code. It'll be developed uh, according to our standards and it's compatible with the surrounding land uses as everything around it is industrial. So staff and the planning board recommend approval of the rezoning and there's a recommended motion here for the council. If there's any questions, you take them now. Any questions for Stephen? May I have one question that's very brief. Um, we're going from the light to the heavy. It's really a noise thing in our code, but I'm curious, we've discussed the airport overlay district in that area. Would that, that would not have any impact on this at all, would it? Um, it, it is within the airport overlay, but the the building this building won't be any taller than much much taller than OPW, and it, it won't be an issue. Okay, I was just but curious. When, when they do come in, of course, we will send site plans to the airport um, for their review as well. We are in the process. Of, just so you know, we are in the process of um, updating our overlay regulations and actually putting the overlay map in our zoning code because the map is actually missing. So you will be seeing a, an ordinance in the next couple months for that. Okay. This other question might be for Mr. Credo um, and property the owner, if, if they develop it. The um, utilities in the area, with the piping that we've got installed in the area, will we be able to offer them utilities? Um, Ted, yeah. Uh, the county provides all the utilities out there, and we don't have any. Okay. So there's no, no appetite for annexation or anything like that? No. no I do know that if, in fact, it was under the town's corporate limits, that the water would be a lot different priced. So it's maybe something to look at. 
But we'd have to get <clears throat> we'd have to get water to them though. Well, nothing much like the we've worked with the county before. The meter would go on that main pipe that mm -hmm. the town supplies anyways, and it would it would it could help. So, but that's just that's not relevant to this topic. Correct. So I have a question. <clears throat> so this is just to rezone the property at this point. That's right. Right. It's rezoning the property to heavy industrial. And the intent is that they could put in a manufacturing. It's not said they're going to put in a manufacturing. Right. That's not, the applicant has indicated that's what the use is going right, to be. But at this point in time, we're not even focused on that. We're focused on heavy industrial rezoning. Yeah, the project isn't here yet. I mean, right. they haven't made application for any project. All we're, we're, all we're trying to do is change the difference <coughs> from one to the other, and we have an understanding that their intent is, but there's no promises whatsoever made or anything at this That's point. That's right. It's simply saying they want to redo it because they have a potential of that. That's have correct. have an intent to do it, but not necessarily. That's correct. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. So all we're doing at this point in time, and I'm, I have a slow mind, so all we're doing at this point in time is just rezoning the property <clears throat> from light industrial to heavy industrial. That's all we're doing at this point. That's correct? right. Any, any heavy industrial use in the code could Anything go on in that the code property. could go in that facility. That's right. Oh, in okay. that land. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. <laughs> any other questions? Comments from the council. <clears throat> okay. All right. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this matter? If so, please come forward. If you will, please state your name and address for the record, please, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Stephen Sanderson with Sanderson Engineering, uh, 2485 Wendell Boulevard, Wendell, North Carolina. Um, I am here representing the owner of the property. Um, f requesting the rezoning. I have uh, had several conversations with Mr. Winsman concerning how to, uh, what we had to do in order to build the facility that we want to. It came up early in our discussion that the I-1 or the light industrial zoning does not accommodate um, food manufacturing. And so that is why we're here tonight requesting it to be rezoned to I-2. Also had conversations with Mr. Creedle concerning the utilities on site uh, and have had conversation with uh, Chandra Farmer with Johnston County. The pump station and water lines that serve that industrial park are county lines. And we, I am told, and it's beyond my purview if anything changes from that, but as it presently stands, just to answer your question, is that um, we will be a Johnston County customer. Mm -hmm. The pump station that is out there, they have um, other uses besides that uh, <clears throat> industrial park use that pump station, but they have reserved allocation, which is less than what we need to be able to build. So there is allocation available today that we can build our plant and start our manufacturing process and, and uh, be able to, to function. The county also has infrastructure in the works to be uh, increased, which at the intersection of uh, Swift Creek Road and 70 Business, that in future there will be a lot more capacity there. But to presently today, we have what we need to be <coughs> able to build this plant and to proceed. Uh, the other question is as far as to what is going there, uh, the, um, the manufacturing process is to take soybeans and turn them into meat substitute or protein substitute for um, cooking for edible uh, product. The uh, company has existed for seven years. It is in Garner right now, needs more room, and so the, our, my, my client is building a building to accommodate them. The building as present, my understanding from discussion with the architect, the owner, and the contractor is um, the building that will be proposed that we will turn in as soon as, uh, assuming that this rezoning goes through, uh, will accommodate four lines of manufacturing. Each um, <coughs> line will, empl will employ 12 people, and there will be two shifts. So there's the possibility and hopefully the probability that at some point there will be 96 employees at this facility in the two shifts if all four lines are up. They will open with one line on two shifts is what I have been told by the owner of the company as to what his plans are with 
hopefully growth and future construction or, or future growth to come from that. Um, we are, um, I'm not exactly certain, uh, Mr. Barber, where, or Dr. Barber, where you were, uh, what, if you have a concern or something about what's going there, but presently we are in the design phase of designing the building for the manufacturing in hopes that this is going to pass tonight. And the, you know, the, the, it is everyone's intention in this project from the builder to the company to the contractor to me and the architect that it will be, it's called Improved Nature is the name of the company that will be coming uh, to that facility. <clears throat> And if you have any specific questions or any other questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. So since, since it's in our ETJ, <clears throat> it goes through our planning department? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So it still goes through our planning department? That's right. Yes. We'll be, we will be drawing and submitting plans to the planning department for both site work, grading, erosion control, stormwater, and for the building of the building. You touch on the uh, sewer a little bit. We all pre-treat, wait well, they pre-treat their wastewater. My understanding is that's not necessary because we're not, we're not, it's not meat that we're doing. Mm -hmm. It is all plant-based. Mm -hmm. And so there won't, there will not be a requirement for pre-treatment. If there is, then we will, we will have to get the permit through Johnston County for took, hooking into their line. They will look at what the process is. As I said, they already exist. The company already exists and is working. So any testing or quality control can be checked and then we will have to meet whatever requirements or standards that they place upon us. Because that's where the, any smell, that's where that would come from through that process. Mm -hmm. Any outside smell, any pre-treatment facilities. But The only thing that I know of I know is, a little bit about that. <laughs> it, was, it was discussed in a conference call that we have to put in a grease trap or a catchment basin, you know, underground tank uh -huh. which is kind of standard for any type of industrial use before it goes into the towns or into the county's sewer system. How much allocation do they give you? We haven't requested it yet, but or how, well, how many, yeah, they have, they they have like 12,000 gallons a day in that facility. Mm -hmm. And depending upon how many lines is, you know, I don't want to tell you anything wrong, but I, I, I did the math, but it was about 60 days ago when, when this originally got turned in. But uh, a good, we will use more water than we will turn back in sewer because a lot of it is put into the product and is cooked into the product and, you know, or, or whatnot. But I don't remember the exact numbers. I do remember that they have more than what we need to fully facilitate that facility. It's good to hear. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Mayor, I'd like to, t Mr. Sanderson, thank you for bringing the project before us. Um, and I, we work closely with the county on the utilities. And if this was in the corporate limits, you would be our utility customer. Mm -hmm. um, now, we do have inside and outside, and I'm sure, but I would ask that you talk with our manager if you have more questions about that. I mean, because there is a lot of variables to that process. But long term, if you look at your rates, it could be a huge impact. Okay. I think it's worth looking at. Okay. And we're great partners with our industry. I understand. <laughs> we're great partners, industry partners. <laughs> and we're reliable, and we're reliable too. Yes, sir. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very any, much. Any other, any other questions for Mr. Sanderson at this time? Thank you, Gibbons. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Anyone else in the audience wishing to speak for or against this matter? If you will, please state your name and address for the record, please. Emma Gimmel, 207 Hancock Street. Uh, Mr. Stevens mentioned it, but I think that maybe Mr. Winsman can explain over there where it said about the odor. Um, was that part of what this project is going to have is an odor that's going to be? No, the applicant had expressed to me that there really isn't much odor emanating from that business, but the because of the type of business it is, the heavy industrial district was it was added as a use to the heavy industrial district because those types of businesses often do lead to orders. And but so they can smell mm -hmm. that with, if you change it many to food, heavy. Fit, many food manufacturing businesses do have orders, but the applicant has said this one really doesn't. And how close is it to the homes and the neighborhoods in that area? It's a pretty good distance. You gotta cross, you gotta cross Citation Lane 
cross OPW's large property, cross the road, and the housing is back behind there. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against this matter, please come forward at this time. Okay. I am not seeing anyone else. Um, if there are no further questions, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Mayor, I move to approve zoning map amendment RZ22-05, finding it's consistent <clears throat> with the Town of Smithfield Conference of Growth Management Plan and other adopted plans, and that the amendment is reasonable and in the public interest. Second. I have a motion and a second by Councilman Rabrill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you for coming you, this evening. <clears throat> Now we'll move on to our no. next item. It's um, ZA-22-01, uh, Town of Smithfield. The applicant is requesting an amendment to Unified Development Ordinances, Articles 10, Section 10.114, as it pertains to recreation and park dedication requirements for major subdivisions, commercial developments, and industrial parks. This time I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing. I make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Motion and a second by Councilman Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Stephen? Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, I think, um, I believe this, this was discussed at the workshop about a month or so ago. I can't remember exactly which meeting, but uh, so this is, um, kind of the formal, ap for formal application before you, and I know at that time you had requested a broader range of um, potential park fees, um, so I have included that in your packet for your review. Um, so the town's fee in lieu is currently at 1.75%, uh, which is about the lowest in comparison to peer communities. Um, we discovered that the town regulations are out of compliance with 160D, something we missed when we did our updates. Uh, the report suggests the need to increase fee and lieu requirements. The draft ordinance is using a 7% figure for park dedication, and that, as I said, I've provided a range in the staff report everywhere from, I don't know, I think it's like 3% up to 10% um, for your consideration. Uh, based on the examples that um, were presented at the workshop. And that, can, again, the council's free to amend the ordinance uh, as you feel is appropriate. But 7% is what's drafted in the ordinance right now. Um, other changes to the recreation ordinance. Um, so this was a part that didn't meet 160D, was we are required to base fee and lieu on the appraised tax value not an independent appraisal. So that is being changed. Um, park dedication funds need to be improved, uh, sorry, be utilized in the immediate area. So I just copied that same language in the ordinance so that we're consistent. I amended, um, I amended the exceptions section. It says eliminate the subsection that pertains to land less than 2,000 square foot um, parks that small won't be able to meet recreational needs, um, and the council already can require uh, park fee and lieu. So there's really no need for that section in the ordinance. I amended Article 10.114.2.3 pertaining to greenway connections. The council gets to review plats and already can conditionalize connections to greenways. That section really wasn't necessary. Um, the dimensions of the ordinance are very rigid. And by not having it in there, the council can leave it up to their discretion as to what really makes sense given the uh, development that they'd be reviewing. I removed all sections related to commercial park dedications. Um, staff found no other communities in North Carolina that require commercial park dedication, and we believe it may even be um, um, 
um, illegal. Not really sure until there's a case, but we'd easily be challenged on it because no other um, community does it, and there's no basically no rational basis for it. Off-street parking section was deleted, and it now refers to Article 10, Part 1 of off-street parking and loading requirements, so we don't have two different sets of standards. We just refer back to the primary set of parking standards that we have in the code. Um, there's a section here requiring the, advice, the Recreation and Parks Advisory Council to review park dedication. That is not a practice that we've had since I've been here in the, in the five years I've been here. So um, we're deleting that. The town council would, would review it and make a decision. And deleted a section that allows fees to be paid one year after the preliminary plat. The town council has no process for collecting fees except for at the time of final plat. So just to be consistent with really how I, I believe all towns do it, um, we just leave it at final plat. Just, <clears throat> Stephen, can I interrupt you there? When, I mean, so we say that it's going to be based off of the appraised uh, tax value, the appraised tax value, um, meaning that's I mean, the value CNGIS, right? So it's easily accessible. They don't have to do any <clears throat> so we don't take stuff. into consideration what's being built on there and what, no, what's going it's even just the, now it's based on it's just the appraisal. appraised value of the raw land of uh, the raw land but now it'll be based on the tax value of the raw land yeah okay all right okay thanks yeah. good question so barring any other questions by the council staff's finding the zoning tax amendment as as proposed consistent with the town's comprehensive growth management plan and other adopted plans and that the amendment is reasonable in the public interest and staff and the planning board recommend approval um, the planning board did not make any recommendation for anything different so the seven percent is still in the in the draft ordinance and again the council is free to look at the range of of the examples there and, and choose what's appropriate and I have a recommended motion here for the council. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, I have one question. The question is, when we met, <coughs> was 7% the amount that we had come up with? Because mm -hmm. what? That's the current amount. Um, what was the amount that we recommended? Is that it, Gary? Yeah, we left it, it at 7%. It is one of the recommendation? What did, what did you say, Steve? 7 was what we had in there before, but the council wanted to see a greater range. And so we extended it all the way up to 10 Hold on, the, uh, we back up a minute mm -hmm. because we had we had our discussion. We came up with an amount that we wanted to see move towards that put us competitive with others. Mm -hmm. Yet we because we're so low that it was pathetic. Okay, I mean it was embarrassing that we were not doing better than we were doing, and so we put a amount that was a considerably more than we were doing, but still less than some others were doing. And that's why I want to know what was that amount. Because, I mean, we say 7%. Was that what it was? Do you remember, Gary? It, our current number is 1.75. Yeah. Okay. But the draft ordinance presented to you had 7% in it, and the council wanted to see a greater range just to see how it There's plays sure. out That's with the examples. And so I've shown you the greater range, but the ordinance still sits at 7%. Our current fee is 1.75. Okay. Okay. All right. So we were going up 7% while we went. That's what we recommended, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm looking at Gary because he was. When we talk about, we look at three, we look at five, and we look at seven. We Gary. Decisions, so we Gary. Come You'll come here. forward again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're having a conversation, weren't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't speak from back then. Sorry. Mm -hmm. We had talked, when we had it during the discussions, we had talked about different rates. We talked at 3%, 5%, 7%, and yeah, we were thanks. looking at a number that would put us close to what others were doing. And so when we talked with the consultants, you know, we came up with 7%, and we talked about it in the advisory board meeting and, and that kind of thing, so 7% is what Stephen and I had talked about and put it in the ordinance. Okay. Mayor, I have a couple points I'd like to make. Um, you touched on it, and I think it's extremely critical that we realize the way that tax assessment is. We're not talking about, this has no impact on any of our current residents. This is about developer fees related to green space and parks, and the town is charging a very small amount currently but there are other communities in this area and other areas that charge a significant amount. But the key thing is, is if you're looking at the value of the raw property when it's developed, 
that's going to change. But this fee to capture the right amount would have to be significantly more than what the later value would be. When that, and it has no impact on the people that buy the house. This is just about park development. Essentially, it's how the town can afford to build more parks, collecting it from a developer. So I think it's important that we remember that. Um, I don't know that um, the 7%, based on what I recall, it put us at the still at the bottom of the chart. I can't recall exactly. But, um, it's about midway. I think it was some 10%. I think it was somebody was like 10%. Yeah. I thought we were better than some, but not quite as much as others. Like, I think Clayton was higher than us considerably. Yeah, I think we went mid range. I, remember I thought we were. I thought we were more reasonable. And, uh, you got and it's, I love to see that report <clears throat> if we had that. The report should be attached. Um, yeah, the report's attached here. Page 52. Midfield fee assessment. That's the report. And if you look in the report, a lot of the other towns are not, are not following 160D. They're not following the requirement. They, they're probably going to be challenged or are currently revising their, their ordinances. A lot of them are just requiring a fee per unit, which is not really following the ordinance or statutes. So you have to kind of infer, you know, what that would get you. So we're probably still less than, let's say, Mebin. And we're probably still less than Clayton on a per dwelling basis at 7%. But again, it really somewhat depends. Depends on the property. It depends on the property value, the yeah. raw property value. Right. That's right. I'm good with that myself. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like the ones that are charging per dwelling, there's not even has anything to do with the appraised no, and value. I, I believe that Clayton's actually being challenged on their current regulations mm -hmm. because they're not following the statute yeah so, so quite a few of these though zebulon clayton mebbin yeah they have all been are doing it on a in a, a per unit basis and then durham is per tax value per, okay okay mm -hmm. perhaps that that was a revision to the tax law at some point and that's why it's changed do we know yeah. mr spence and possibly it could be but we're going to be in compliance with this new rule or new ordinance amendment, I should say. It's not. Okay. So doing the approval, if we approve this, then we are in compliance with the new laws and regulations. Correct. And we should be in. That's the reason why we're, there's some other things that we're doing now that we won't do because we don't want to violate the law. So I don't want to sidetrack that. But that's why. If we're doing the right thing, we want to do the right yeah. thing. Okay. I'm happy. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments for Stephen at this time? Okay. There's, is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this matter? If you will, please come forward. Yes, ma'am. I'm Pam Lampy at 415 North 2nd Street, and I just had a question on um, this tax value based on uh, <clears throat> the tax appraisal and versus the... I guess you'd have to have an independent appraisal. Right. Our current ordinance requires an independent appraisal, which is a burden for property owners, and it also creates a delay when they want a final plat, and all of a sudden they got to get an appraisal. Maybe they didn't use an appraisal when they bought the property. The new ordinance would require the assessed tax value. That's it's already a ready, readily available number, and the legislature has deemed that as the number to use. So in theory, though, we would be getting more fees if we waited for the independent appraisal because it's probably going to appraise higher than the yeah. tax value. Possibly, but that's also why we're Boom. looking at increasing our fees. Yeah, probably see, starting at a lower number, but you're putting a little higher park dedication fee. So there is, you know, win-lose there. That's a, you're correct, but that would make us not compliant yeah. and open us up Legality, to Legality, I would legal. question, so. Okay, so I guess my thing is we're trying to get our park and recreation fees up, yes. right? So you'd want to use the highest value possible, and it would be up to the developer to do the, the appraisal, right, for the property. Under, current, just, under current ordinance, but it's not statutory, statutorily uh, allowed. The, sta the state statutes require us to use tax value. Okay, and so the question I have, too, is like, is this um, land value before development? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're mm -hmm. losing that value too. Mm -hmm. 
well, you can't. if it's developed, it's going to be more valuable. Yeah. So right. we're losing is what I'm just pointing out. Right. Thank yep. you. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak on this matter? Just one thing. So we're currently getting 1.75% of an independent thing, which is a lot less than the 7% that we'll get even with the new, using the new tax factor. Exactly. Is that correct? That's correct. We will have considerably more money coming into Parks and Recreation than we have today. That's correct. And yeah. we're in compliance with the law. Yes, sir. Did, how does, does this money... And it can only be used to build new parks, correct? That's right. Where is this money, when it's collected, where does it go? It, it goes into a, a dedicated park fund mm -hmm. that uh, I just handed some funds over to Greg Seiler today. I specifically hand them the checks because he's got to segregate that money for park purposes only. The general fund becomes restricted. And is there any, is there any way, because we are non-compliant currently as it states, with these two or three new subdivisions starting out, are they going to pay the 7% or are they going, they going to pay the 1.5% um, because it's already, they're already they would, they would, it's a good question. I, I think. Because if we can't, if something's not compliant. Most of them have already paid okay. um, at least part of it. It's a good question. I mean, I think you've got new rule, old rule um, regulations. Um, we may not be able to capture them at the higher rate. Well, anyways, I wish we could, but I appreciate y'all doing this. It's kind of, I think, a small thing that gets overlooked, and it's kind of interesting to see it kind of, when I was on the planning board, this discussion came up and kind of worked through the wheels of government, and hey, this is one small example of how we manage that growth, that we can share our parks for the future, and appreciate what y'all done to get this straight for us. Thank you. So one point, you just said, though, that it can only be used for new parks. Well, that's or a question I'm going to have for parks Bob. Parks recreation, I mean, for existing parks, if you want to add, expand existing parks, for more facilities in the parks, I would assume it, it can be spent on any parks and recreation activity, not just for new parks, but in lieu, because if, if we already have a park in an area, but because we added more population, we need more facilities in that facility, now, like we need to put more soccer fields or whatever, you know, then, then we could put in existing parks and expand. This money could be used for that too. Absolutely. Correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. I want a clarification. Thank you. I mean, the part I wanted to clarify is I need to probably discuss with legal about um, the developments that are kind of midstream. What fee do they have to pay? Because there is provisions in the code that when they make application, those are the rules in which they develop by. So we probably can't change the game on right. them. I'm mm. sure. They're kind of grandfathered in. They're grandfathered in, right? Moving Grand final plan. Yeah. 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 yeah, sure. Well, that's what I was getting ready to say. <laughs> hey, are any of them at the stage of final plan? <laughs> They're in various stages, yeah. Yeah, but we're saying we're charging this at final plan, so um, something to consider. Yes. Right, which, where, where does that start? Yeah. Is it with the first application or is it with final plat? So something Bob and I need to discuss. Yep. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? Any other questions from council at this time? Yes, sir. Right. I just want to make one comment. Um, I think there's really two issues on the table about this rate. What number you look at off to assess if you're comparing 1% of 100,000 versus 7% of 55,000, depends on what number you use. Yep. I think it's important for this council not to make an informed decision. I'm okay with the plan, but I think that this should be revisited during budget. Just much like we set our tax rate, this should be something that we look at each budget cycle and see how that, I'm not saying we change it, but it's something that should be revisited because obviously over the years we've lost the opportunity. And at the end of the day, this money comes out of our current citizens' pocket, and this is going to stop some of that, and I'm excited about that. So. Just a point I'd like to make. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. All right. At this time, if there are no further questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close public hearing. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Mayor, right. I move to approve zoning text amendment ZA2201, finding the amendment consistent with the town's typical comprehensive growth management plan and other adopted plans that the amendment is reasonable and in the public interest. Second. Second.
I have a motion and a second by Councilman Wood. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Mayor, before we move off that topic, I'm also going to make a just tell um, Council Member Sloan Stevens, thank you for uh, helping us with this. He uh, was instrumental in us moving forward in certain parts of this, and I'm, I'm very appreciative of him for that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. We will now move on to citizens' comments. If there's anyone wishing to speak, uh, please come forward and state your, your name and address for the record, and I'll ask you to limit your comments to three minutes. I'm Pam Lampy at 450 North 2nd Street, and um, tonight I just want to ask some questions and discuss the water plant greenway and landscaping plan that was presented tonight. And on one of the pages it says that it's proposed. So my first question was, is it, what does that mean? Is it just a proposal or is this actually something that's set in stone? Um, I called Mr. Cradle about uh, two weeks ago, the week of Thanksgiving, and because a friend of mine had told me that the water plant was coming to an end and he thought by the end of December that everything would be, the trailers would be pulled and it would be ready to the landscape and um, the nature trail put back. So I called Mr. Cradle and he had said tentatively that we could meet with our neighborhood in January to discuss um, the landscaping and the nature trail relocation. And so I'm glad this, he presented this tonight so we can, I can go back and present this to the neighborhood. So that was something I was gonna make everybody aware of. And Along the way, we had some questions and some requests. Um, for instance, um, uh, some of our group wanted a panel gate so that we couldn't see through the gate. Um, so that was something we want to have visited, uh, revisited, and additional landscaping, hopefully. Um, I don't know if that's in the budget, and Mr. Cradle said maybe not. And the other thing is more of a personal request for me is I would like to walk where this proposed nature trail is going to go um, since I live right next to it. And it may be okay the way it's written, but, but I don't know. Um, so those are my questions, and um, let's see. So does anybody have any answers to those questions? <laughs> Um, thanks for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, we, we spoke a little bit about this before the meeting. Um, there, there's nothing, our, our purpose in bringing this forward tonight was just to enlighten everybody on where we were. We didn't feel like everything was set in stone, but based on what we had discussed when the project first began we wanted to stay consistent with that as much as we could and that's what I think we have done um, and I think at the same time you're somewhat consistent in asking for more landscaping and and asking for a nice gate and, and I think those things were discussed back then too um, ultimately it's going to come down to, to budget numbers and, and cost and even availability of things this day and age there's nothing to prevent you and your uh, neighbors or anyone who, of interest meeting with uh, Mr. Creedle in, uh, in January to go over this stuff, uh, or before, I imagine he would prefer to meet even earlier than that um, since this project's moving relatively quickly. Um, as far as walking the, the trail, I, I haven't been back there enough to know if it's walkable. Um, uh, I mean, I'd be more than happy to walk with you if I knew where it was, but uh, um, we'll, we'll do our best to lay it out for you to uh, try to identify the location to give your, put your mind at ease so you have a surety of where it's going to go. That would be great. Um, and so for the additional landscaping, are you saying there might be money in the budget or? There or? is no, no additional money in the budget for the water plant project for that. Now, whether the Appearance Commission money, they have money and they want to try to enhance landscaping, or, or if there's other pots that could be, you know, gotten into, it just depends on what type of 
uh, landscaping we're talking about, and the maintenance is a big issue too. Whatever we do, it's going to have to be maintained. It doesn't do us any good to put up a lot of beautiful plants just to have them get overgrown in, right. you know, three months. And, and I know this is going to be a berm. A berm is hilly. Uh, you're not going to drive a mower up and down it, or it's going to all have to be hand dealt with. So uh, we want to make it as maintenance free as possible. I agree, and I, I had talked to Mr. Cradle about something to plant along the berms that would help erosion and stuff like that. Something yeah. similar to monkey grass, but and that I, I would once a agree. Year. Just bring that stuff up at the the meeting with him, and he'll bring it to us. But again, it will cost extra money, other than the right. And right now, there is not any money in the budget for additional landscaping, right? But certainly something we could look at and talk about, right? So right now, we are pushing five minutes into citizens' comments. So any, any? As a citizen, we have asked for many years to have this money set aside in our budget. And um, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Lampy. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak during citizens' comments? Again, please state your name and address, and I'll ask you to try to keep it close to three minutes, please. Elizabeth Ann Temple, 904 Chestnut Drive, Smithfield. Let me admit to the record this past week's Johnstonian News that includes a photo of Councilman Marlon Lee with the late coach Carl Spragans, who was our former high school health and PE teacher, as well as Mayor Moores. The Smithville Summer High School basketball court will be dedicated to the late Carl Spragans this coming Friday night, December 9th, after the girls' basketball game. You must purchase tickets in advance at ticketspicket.com in order to be admitted to the game and ceremony. I completed extensive research with the documentation and emailed it to the state committee director with copies to the Johnston County Heritage Center and to the town to be considered for official state seal highway markers for Revolutionary War Brigadier General William Bryan and for a Civil War bugler John Parker. Both were from this area in Johnston County. At our historic Howell Theater in downtown Smithfield, please go and see devotion about the United States Naval Aviator, Jesse Brown of Mississippi. This Thursday is the last night to see it there. I'd like to submit to the record an opinion letter I wrote that was published in the Johnstonian News by editor Scott Boljack on this past February 2nd, 2022. Let us stride toward freedom for all, with snow forecast recently, I checked out some books from the public library in Smithfield, one of which it was Stride Toward Freedom by the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. I was so surprised to learn on page 15 that King listened to an opera, Donizetti's Lucia de Lamamor, in his car on the way to the Montgomery, Alabama protest. He wrote that the beauty of the inimitable music and the splendor of the skies inspired him. King felt that people's minds were so conditioned to segregation that they adjusted to how things were. He wrote that the ultimate tragedy of segregation is that it not only harms one physically but injures one spiritually, scars the soul, and degrades the personality. It deprives man of freedom and relegates him to the status of a thing rather than a person. Thinking about individual freedom, King wrote about and agreed with the late Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, who referred to communism as a Christian heresy and that no Christian would accept or profess its concepts or practices. King remembered the Reverend E. Stanley Frazier, one of the most outspoken segregationists in the Methodist Church. Frazier believed it was not the job of a minister to fix society's problems. King took the view that the Christian church should take the lead in social reforms and stand against social evils. I believe the same. King offered ways to make churches the least segregated places and to make the principle of brotherhood a reality, such as not forgetting to ask, what will God think? King mentioned the hymn in Christ, there is no east or west, and noted that Sunday school and the 11 a.m. worship hour are the most segregated hours of Christian America. He said, the church must remove the yoke of segregation from its own body. Okay. 
There is a cookbook by Reverend Dr. Alveda King that can be purchased at Amazon.com. It is entitled, Gigi's Home for the Holidays. I contacted the Selma mayor hoping that we as towns could collaborate on an event to honor the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. I'd like for it to be held at Smithfield Selma High School in January 2023. I asked Doris Wallace about helping us with this and she has agreed to do so. We love our historic town of Smithfield and thank you for your time. Have a good evening and happy new year. Thank you, Ms. Thank Temple. You. Anyone else wishing to speak during citizens' comments? Okay. Not seeing any. All right. We'll now move to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, moving on to our business items. Um, first business item this evening is consideration and request for approval of increased cost associated with the police department expansion project. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as we're all aware, the police department is being expanded, uh, has been now for a few months. Um, we're running into some change orders that are moving us outside of our budget. Uh, you may recall that when we created this design build program, a contingency budget was not included. So all we had to work with was exactly what was in the budget. Um, there were some, some necessary change orders that you have received information on that were approved that included undercut and backfill of the site. Um, Stormwater management, uh, additional stormwater management that had to be done, and the milling of Fifth Street uh, and the repair of the, the, we went ahead and repaired the street there at the alleyway um, that had such a big dip in it uh, at the same time. Um, those change orders equated to 171,000. At this point, um, the design build contractor, Todd Waddell is here, um, he is asking for an additional $267,000 and on page 119 and 120 of your budget packet you have a list of things that he has put together of items that have increased in cost um, since the beginning of this project to now that he is acquiring. Uh, so he is here to explain why those increases have taken place which of course, we're seeing a lot of things increase with supply and demand um, and material costs. Uh, but I'm not going to speak for him. So, Mr. Waddell, if you wouldn't mind coming up and, and addressing the council, that would be great. Well, we were presenting with that a little long ago. Here or there? Either place. Either, that's fine. You're fine right there. Uh, members of the council, Thank you for um, having me tonight on this matter. Um, as you know, we've, we've been in some unprecedented times uh, through the last few years, and and um, hopefully we're in the you know we're, we're we're beyond the pandemic and that kind of stuff. But it's really caused inflated costs in the construction side with um, and, and supply chain issues. Um, uh, I, as the, the <clears throat> I and, 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 and the design team, have uh, we, we've been fighting this battle ever since we started this project um, uh, with the, the call rising costs. Um, we've actually changed the design a couple of different times to try to capture the, the supply chain issues along with uh, with with inflated costs on different materials. Um, and and it's just we 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 cannot get ahead of the curve. Um, so as you can see in the the spreadsheet that was um, given to you guys, the the, the different percentages based on um, they, these are real numbers. There, there's not anything that I've pulled off of the internet on on you know uh, in, industry um, uh, in, in this industry or anything. It's just real numbers that I have. 
um, and and the, the the cost has gone up. Uh, some of the few that, that that really stand out are are roofing costs. Roofing costs have went up 15% every quarter um, in the last year. Um, uh, <clears throat> there, there, there's just thing after thing. Fuel costs have gone up. Everybody's charged me fuel surcharges and and those kind of things. Um, and and overall, the the total cost of uh, construction has gone up. What I can what, in my figures is 19.2 percent, and it's just I, I don't I don't have that in the project. Um, and and I'm asking you guys if you guys could uh, could please help us um, with getting this project completed. So I was thinking with the design build. Um, the way when we decided to go with the design build concept, right? Uh, I mean, obviously, we understand what's going on nationally and what's yes, been sir. going on, but sooner or later it has to stop. Yes, sir. And sooner or later, someone has to say no. And whether it's, that's us tonight, I don't know, but sooner or later it has to, mm -hmm. right? Um, because we can't continue, and government agencies can't continue to see increases in prices like this. But I thought I was under the impression or was told that the reason we go with, or decided to go with the design build concept was try to tell, help prevent Bill, can some you come of this up from, from happening, right? Addresses. Um, it certainly can understand, right, the increases and so forth. I 100% agree with that, but I think, and maybe without the design build, it would it would be much much more than this. Yeah, right? I'm almost uncomfortable I, saying this because if I was sitting on the other side. I, I know how I would feel, but I think Todd tried to express that he's had um, with his architect and his design team uh, through the course of the project multiple design changes that they've made that basically reduced the cost of increase. And as I said, that's something I don't like to say. Right. I know how you feel about it, but that's what he's been chasing. They've changed the, uh, the roof design, what, three times? Yes, sir. Um, all in an effort to, to, to control costs. What happened to us um, in this time frame with the design build process is, you know, you go into that with the idea, okay, we can get down into the materials and we can say, well, we'd like a, we'd like a, a, a you know, a, a different flooring that's nicer. How do we work it into the budget? What, we could t what can we take out? Because of the issues that he's run into with material costs um, going up so high, it wasn't looking at what we could add or, or, or take out of the interior of the project. It was just how to get it built. I can tell you that I, I feel fairly confident that, um, honestly, if we would have gone through a design bid build process, I don't believe you would have received a bid. You're not going to have a contractor out there that's going to give you a lump sum bid to build a building right now and take the chance that whatever that dollar is, he's stuck with it. So, you know, I think that kind of, kind of leaves you where Todd is, but I hope that explains the two different processes. Um, we're not seeing it anywhere where, from a building standpoint, a contractor is, is giving lump sum prices on projects that are going to last a year because they they can't get their suppliers to commit more than sometimes 30 days. I think at one point, um, Mr. Waddell um, was talking to me about lumber cost, yeah. and it was two weeks. I've seen it down. I've seen lumber cost down to four days. Four days? Yeah. So that's what they've been chasing. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I'm still confident that, um, that, I, that we chose the right mechanism to execute the project. Um, we're just in a, in a difficult time. And I know, I can't remember which one of you, probably all of you, when we were here the last time, you know, said, is this it or are we going to go up again when we went to the 1.3 million? And clearly, this is where we're at. Mayor, I have a few questions. Thank you for y'all bringing this data before us and building us a building. Um, I know you're working hard on that. And I understand that the uh, site improvements or up it had an effect. My real concern is obviously we are in, in midst of this. We're under construction. We've got to move forward. 
but with this materials, are you guys going to go ahead and order it so we don't see a future price increase? I mean, or are you going to come back to us before the yeah, project's done? Yes, I mean, we have ordered, we have, I've, I've put everybody, all of my subcontractors on, on commitments um, at this point. Um, so, so, so there, there won't be any more rising costs. We've, that, that was one thing I, I couldn't put subcontractors, I couldn't put anybody or suppliers under commitment and, until we finished completing the design because we changed it three times. So we had to, you know, but once it got changed, trying to save money from the, the earlier design, then I had to wait till I got the design complete before I could send it out for pricing and those things. But we have got that design complete now. And um and I have all the commitments uh, under uh, all the all the, the the suppliers and labor costs uh, committed. I just know uh, if 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 I just believe that if we were told. We've been told, that, I know you can't control this, and it's not your fault. I understand that, and I don't believe that. But I simply say, if someone said that they told us it will cost us $1.8 million to build that building, we'd have said no. Exactly. <laughs> $750,000, we said, okay. $1.3 million, well, we're stuck. So, okay, now $1.8 million. That's a, that's a whole lot more money. <laughs> We've got a lot of raises to pay for, too. Huh? We're going to have a lot of raises that were approved in, in the budget that have to be paid for, too. So, yep. you know, and we continue to see this. And, whew, I mean, when, when's it going to end, right, for 3,000 square feet? Basically, 3,000, right, additional 3,000 square feet, roughly. 3,650, excuse me, 3,650. Mayor, I did, I did receive a, an updated uh, project schedule yep. um, from the, from our contractor um, just within the last few days. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I've got this wrong, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe March 20th, 2023 was kind of the turnover. Yes, sir. That included cleanup and that kind of thing. So about the mid-March to late March is when they are intending to turn the project over to, and, and to when us. Do, when do we break ground on the project? Ooh, that's a good uh, question. June. Um, yeah. That sounds right. No questions. There was some discussion about the parking lot change too. Has that been included in this? Yes, sir. And that's the expansion. And was that include resurfacing that old parking lot? Because I know that was mentioned. So no, we haven't talked about that. No, yet. It, that's not part of this project. But that's one of our change orders. Is that one of our change orders? No. The parking lot he's talking about? No. Or the only change is that order included? I was asphalt was the 5th Street. Mm -hmm. um, the only change orders we've had so far is, uh, is something, the existing conditions of the lot itself, um, where we had unsuitable soils across the whole lot. We, mm -hmm. had, to, we had to undercut the whole thing. Um, there was uh, a water line in the way of the the the, the, the storm drain. Mm -hmm. that we had to, to move and get out of the way, and then the the milling of of uh, Fifth Street because it had already had a couple layers of asphalt over the top of it at that time. If we layered another layer on top of it, it was just going to be too high at that point. Mm -hmm. Councilman Scott, are you referring to the uh, parking lot to on Fourth Street to the right of the fire? Department? Yeah, my understanding was they were going to be connected or they will be, up. They will be connected, yes, but we don't have an overlay of the old parking lot. Okay. Yeah, that was not part of their scope. But I, I understand had, it wasn't, but our manager discussed that with us. Yeah, I was going to let you know that I have met with uh, Jimmy Edwards, J.P. Edwards. We've walked it. We've discussed the repairs that need to be made, and he's in the process of putting an estimate together for me for the redo of that parking lot that I'll provide to Mr. Scott. Okay, understood. Thank you. Yes, sir. Have we seen a uh, new, the new layout of the building? Just the changes have been made. Any, I mean, because we're talking about the roof been changed three times, and this has been done. And, and is there any other things that we, when we received the drawings, we received the drawings back when it was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> so, so I kind of like to see the one point six million dollar building. Yeah. So I'm the architect. I'm Brian Jones. Um, Sorry, Bri Brian. Could you give me your last, last name? Jones. Thank you. A uh, drummer for the Rolling Stones, if you're keeping up. But, um, the, uh, the changes 
we made was nothing to do with the floor plan, it's only to do with structure. So what we ran into, um, we originally designed this with a bar joist, steel bar joist system. Um, when Todd has been working hard to source that, they found out it was a six to eight month lead time, uh, as well as a surcharge, um, because for them to order the material now and plan for the, the, the cost increase that they already anticipated were gonna happen, they were gonna put that all into the, the budget for when he signed it. So what we did is we went back um, and got with our, we have a, a wood truss supplier that's um, from this area, works in this area that we work with a lot, and we talked to him about changing all the steel bar joists to a wood um, truss structure. Um, we also looked at re-engineering the, um, the, the way in which the mechanical screen goes around the building. It was also had uh, more steel in it, so we took a lot of steel out of that. Again, these were things we were doing to try to improve the, the schedule, as well as, as lock in on a budget that was not going to be inflated for a six to eight month delivery schedule. Uh, the trusses are gonna be here. Um, they're already here. Yeah, yeah. that's already. So that's we time. were able to source that, get it designed and redesigned and have them on, on, uh, here on site and have that paid for and no, no longer has to be an unknown or additional cost for you guys. But in the whole process of this redesign, um, the floor plan has stayed the same. Everything else about the building has stayed the same. It's just a structural modifications to, to improve the schedule and improve the budget. Any other questions, comments? I do have a question for the manager. How are we gonna pay for it? Well, the easy answer is you're paying for it out of American Rescue Plan funds now, so you continue to use that money to pay for it. Um, that's the cheapest way to pay for it. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use fund balance to pay for it when you've got American Rescue Plan Act funds sitting there that have a timeline and this fits their need. Uh, so how much have we got so far before we get some more? I'm, I'm sorry? How much have we got on the ARP so far? Um, what was this? Uh, with the 200 and... 67,000, you're going to have about 609,000 added to the project for the PD expansion that would come out of this. On top of that, uh, with the change orders, um, you're looking at another 438,000. So you're looking at about $1.4 million coming out of the American Rescue Plan Act funds for this. And what would that leave our balance, roughly? Well, you also have a rescue truck on the on the agenda yet tonight, so it depends on what you do with that. Um, if you leave the rescue truck as is, you're still gonna have a balance of about 1.62 million left in your American Rescue Plan funds. If you go through with the rescue truck as requested later, you're gonna have about 1.49 million left. American Rescue Plan. Just wondering if we should, I've had some discussions recently with some, some members of um, our state legislature and regarding American Rescue Funds. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, should we take this and as well as some possible others, uh, Amphitheater was another project, right, that we had, we've identified um, and go back to them to see if we can get additional funding. Yep. Um, I don't know if that's a possibility or not, um, but I do know that there's a lot of money that's still out there. Um, it's still available. I'm just wondering if it would be wise for us to do that before we sit here and approve something, you know. Um, but also understand you got to finish that building too <laughs> and keep moving forward on it, right? Um, I, I don't know, um, but this is a huge overage, right? And, and I, you know, and I think they're seeing this all around the state, right? It's not, this is nothing, <laughs> you know, uh, directed at, at, at yeah, you, you personally. Don't, you don't understand how hard right. to, it is to, 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 to do this. Sure, you know, so I know. I've never I, had I, to do it before, never been in this, this I've been no, I mean, doing I, this work I, for, for 25 years. And yeah, just, no, I, I, I get it, right? I mean, I'm, I'm 
right now a 300 and almost a 400 million dollar building right now that I'm overseeing right yes. so I certainly understand that the construction of that, that building and the cost so I guess I know we're not comparing apples to apples but water plant we just discussed that were we seeing this type of increases in the water plant I mean we stayed under budget I'm seeing Mr. Cradle shaking his head no right? right so I guess I know we're not comparing apples to apples but some of the, you know I just not, I guess I don't understand how we were able to do one and you're right. You know, uh, different construction, yeah. different project. To understand, right? Some of this stuff is not involved in that project, but obviously, concrete, masonry, some other items like that are. Um, fuel, um, lots of items on here for fuel, right? Um, just, I, it's, it's. I mean, we say it's American Rescue Funds, but it's still taxpayer money. It is still taxpayers' dollars. And what I've seen over the last couple of years, and I get it, right? But until someone starts to say no, it's going to continue, right? And I'm not saying that we say no. I'm don't please don't take that as as that, right? But until the consumers start to say that, these prices will continue, um, especially when people know that they've got grant money. I'm not, I'm not <coughs> insinuating that that's what you're doing. Please do not take my comments. I am not saying that at all, at all. Okay, I'm just saying that in the overall economy itself, right? I mean, this is just, this is a big pill for me to swallow, knowing what all we, we had talked about for using these funds and so forth, of how this project continues to escalate. Uh, I mean, if we were building a brand new police department, would, you know, it would be a different story, but we're just adding, we're just adding on. And it's, and it's, it's pushing, and we're not even finished. Pushing $2 million. Yeah. That's one eighty. 1.8 is pushing 2 million. Yep. I don't know. I mean, Council Scott, you raise a good point. How are we paying for it, right? So, well, um, correct, Mayor. And I also understand, and, and not naive to the fact of the changes, and I also understand that men have to be paid whether they're taking down a building or putting one together or right. a new one. Um, yep. And they had to remove stuff over there. And I'm not certainly making an excuse, but the, the increased cost just seems significant. My concern is, is, you mentioned March 23 of a close of this project. Does, does this change, and I, I understand it's design build, but does that include the completion materials inside the flooring, the things that you got to put in? All, it's, this should be that will, that final will, dollar. That would be final dollar. Okay. We're beyond all the um, existing conditions with the lot and all that stuff, and now it's all... Mechanical so stuff's on site, everything. I mean, mechanical stuff's already ordered. It may not be on site yet, but it should. PO's it. done. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, this list of items, the, the stuff you got listed, this is what it is. Yes, sir. At this point. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, we purchase it. If we provide the funding, then you purchase it, it's done. Yes, sir. And so, we don't have a chance for the increase again. Mm -hmm. If we purchase it now, as long as we can get it, the question is, can you get it? That's the question. Next question. I think I understood him instead. This stuff's been ordered. Uh, the, everything, everything yep. on that list is is committed costs at this point to this project, and and everything has been ordered that needs to be ordered. So, do we can we get a breakdown of what that is? I mean, this is doesn't this is high level, but it doesn't t tell me exactly what it is. Yes, sir. I sure can. I'd like to like to see. Matter of fact, uh, Mr. Mayor, if it pleases the council. Um, Bill and I spoke about this with Mr. Waddell, and he's agreed that if we, as his invoices come in, he's he's willing to provide those exact invoices to us um, with the comparative cost from what was originally planned so that we can see the difference and measure it with each invoice as they come in. Um, that would help uh, make sure that, um, you know, there's a confidence level among the council and the public that this is, these are accurate numbers. Is that, did I, was I speak properly? Yes, sir. Bills. Yeah. I guess the question is, though, here we are. Well, I, I know with the water plant, we ordered a lot of stuff for ahead of the curve, I guess, if you want to call it. Were we able to do that with this project? No. If so, why, why weren't well, we? 
again, we were we were working on a design while we were doing construction, trying to trying to get trying ahead to of up. trying to you no, know, we were trying to get ahead of the the cost increases. We could see them coming, and and so when we when we originally started talking about it, we we're going to do a pre-engineered metal building. All right, the pre-engineered metal building was twelve months out on ordering plus yeah, the cost increases that went up 20 percent okay so we changed and decided to do a block building which is what is there now with uh steel bar joist okay um the block hasn't changed but the steel bar joist at as soon as we got done with design and sent it to um a steel supplier the uh the steel had gone out to nine months plus the the cost had inflated Probably it was right at 45, 50 percent. Then there was really so, no point. There so, was really no way to. So plan then, for it. so then we decided to, to to go to wood trusses, and we already we spoke to wood uh, trust supplier and said we could get it in this amount of time and this kind of cost. So we changed the design to to wood trusses, all while we're working on the building to getting up to the wood trusses part. So all this has I'm been sure. a work in progress. So the, are these numbers true, just pass-through numbers? Uh, yes, sir. Increases? I mean, as far as if it's the cost of freezer. windows, uh, it's it's $2,500 more. You're not putting, that, you're not marking that, up. No, 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 sir. These are all we true costs. Those are all to real costs. To your point, the invoices yes, yes, that sir. come in. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mayor, I'd like to entertain a motion um, on this project. Um, I would move that we approve the increase as documented with the consideration of the ARP money um, based on what that looks like. And I would encourage staff to consider this, as you mentioned, for potential grant or additional funding if it's, if it's so reachable. I think that's a fantastic idea. I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. And just for clarification, right, you, you're, you're saying we're, we're, we're approving this, but the fund, basically what I think I heard you say is the funding, we can we can look at options for the funding. Right. right? I, I'll not take saying it must come no, from, that's right. that's from right. a certain power. Okay, I, I agree well, with the that. Last the last resort, resort to use the American yeah. Rescue, and yeah. Right. Yeah. you can apply for the funds funds more funding That gives else. you some options, right, yes. and you can work with that. I think okay. he could bring us a... a an amendment to the with Mr. Siler, they can work together and get I mean, we've got to have a roof on the building, it yeah. doesn't do us much good, right? Yep. So, all right, enjoy. all right, we got a motion and, and a second. Uh, any other any further discussion on it? All right, I right, have a motion to second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Mayor, I would say too, I look forward to March 23 for open house <laughs> on this bill. Absolutely, yep. thank you, sir. Thank you, right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We, 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 I mean, we get it, right? We understand. It's just, it's just a tough one to swallow, given what we started with on this one. I understand so, completely. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. See if we can get it uh, finished out in January. It'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Um, we'll now move on to our next business item. Uh, consideration and request for approval to adopt ordinance number 515, amending chapter 18, article 3, div Division 1, Section 18 through 76D, Connection Requirement in the Town's Code of Ordinances. Stephen, is that you, sir? Yes. All right. So this is in the Administrative Code, so it's not anything related to zoning or subdivisions, but uh, in cooperation with Ted, we thought this would be an important ordinance to bring forward. Um, 
kind of as a background, we've had a number of um, projects, you know, infill developments that have requested septic, and there's been a fair amount of discussion about, you know, should we, could we, and found out we have to because the way our ordinance is written, we have to allow septic. Um, ideally, we don't want a lot of septic lots in the town corporate limits, so that's why we have this ordinance before you tonight. So our current ordinance requires connection to sewer and water if the building or structure to be served is located less than 100 feet from existing public water or sewer line that can reasonably serve the property and no easement is required to be purchased for the connection. So this is very lenient or really a low standard compared to what most other towns um, require. And I did list a couple of them here. I think Benson's is the closest. They require 200 feet from a building. <coughs> Most ordinances require a certain distance from the actual property that's being developed on, not from the building being proposed. Um, and I put the statute that allows the towns to regulate uh, sewer connection in the report. The uh, proposed ordinance would require connection if the property is within 300 feet to, if the property is within 300 feet of a water or sewer line. So not 100 feet to a building. Um, and water and sewer would have to be extended to the length of the property and to adjacent parcels. So you wouldn't just go to the building you're serving, but you'd have to bring it along so the next property could connect. <clears throat> um, so that's, that's, that's the change. Um, and I've got the draft ordinance here before you. And this is um, in the administrative code, so no public hearing is required. So it's just re approval by the town council. And with that, uh, if you have any questions, both Ted and I are available to respond. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Would this be looked at if it was a reasonable request, if it's like a a wetland or something that they would not have to extend that pipe all the way to the end of that property? I mean, would that be something staff would look at? Um, I guess I'll leave that to Ted, but it seems like, you know, reasonably connect to, to a sewer line if you have to do an environmental, that doesn't seem very reasonable. I think y'all should have the flexibility to discuss that with the developer or builder, whoever. Yeah. Because, I mean, it would make no sense in some cases. May I make a recommendation? I can make a motion. We amend the town of Smithfield Code of Ordinance, Chapter 18, Article 3, Division 1, Section 17 76 D, as written. Second. Motion and a second to approve. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Moving right along to our next business item, consideration and request for approval of a certified action by the town council as it relates to the old town hall property. Um, Bob or Mike, I'm not sure. Just leave this to Bob. Okay. Bob? This is uh, our effort to comply with last year's new statute in the 160D, which is 1119, and that statute basically um, provides for the town to pass an ordinance that, uh, er that designates a certain area um, as in special need of revitalization for the benefit and welfare of its citizens, which uh, I think it's pretty obvious this is. Um, and this particular building is being so designated in this ordinance if you pass it. Uh, 119 or 1119 is a statute that is a direct grant from the state. The state determines what the rules are. The state has written them in advance. You don't have a, it's not a code that you pass. It's uh, one of the ordinances they pass. It's one of a number of alternative possible procedures to uh, mitigate the conditions of the old town hall. Um, in order to have available all of those procedures, um, we're bringing this in front of you tonight. It will trigger some um, possible, uh, some issues where the building inspector can uh, give notices, to, uh, file uh, complaints as to the property administratively and even hold hearings, um, which can um, try to address the conditions of the property uh, in the com 
context of the state building code. I thought um, this probably would pass this. Those procedures were set out in the statute too. So it's a, a, a new rework. Now there were other procedures we had in the past with a, uh, with a statute that's been replaced last year. So what we're trying to do is have everything with the newest statute. Um, so the statute, so I gave you previously when we were considering this ordinance, sort of a rundown of what would happen. But what will happen basically is this particular section of this ordinance uh, will, upon you producing, uh, you passing this particular ordinance, will allow the building inspector to proceed uh, with an order um, mitigating the condition of this property. Now, it's not the exclusive measure. Mm -hmm. There is, um, you passed 1129 under 160D, which is a town code, and it has different enforcement provisions and more specific yeah, standards. Yeah, um, as you know, um, 119 applies to all towns mm -hmm. in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and the legislature thought that we should have 1129 because the needs of Pine Level are not the same as Charlotte. So um, it, it does allow both procedures. Um, there are also other uh, procedures in the prior law um, that can uh, result in the mitigation of this property. But tonight we're here trying to comply with last year's new statute. And that is 1119, and it um, says that you will designate this area as in special need of revitalization. So can I ask a question? Yes, sir. So I thought we were working towards a condemnation. Well, I thought we'd been. I thought we'd been that. I thought we had. We had spent some time and effort and money to work towards that, and uh, that's why I'm confused by this document. Well, this document is the fact that after we began those procedures, the legislature redid them all. Okay, so they redid the procedures. So we're just coming in compliance with the procedures. It's likely that you may end up in the same situation. At the end of this, these procedures is possible litigation. Okay. So the, I guess my question is, have we, are we starting all over again with the new legislation? We're, we're, there are about four to five different ways you proceed on this. Okay. So the, um, this, if you want to, us to go in front of the court and say we're <coughs> proceeding with all the newest means, this is 160D, it's the newest statute. You've been amending everything to do 160D, and we amended to do this in May, but we're passing it now. I guess my question really, and I think that's most everybody's question would be, is does <coughs> this get us one more step closer to what our people in the town of Smithfield want for the last two, know how many years? 20, 30 years, I don't know how long it's been in demand, but it's a lot longer than my tenure on this bench, right, on this, that, on this council. That's what I understand you want, and we're trying to be sure we have that done with every modern statute. Unfortunately, this is a modern statute that's just just revised, so we're complying with it. Okay, and to some extent, we've already done the same thing, but it'll result in the same thing. Mr. Mayor, I make a recommendation we approve it. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> I have a motion uh, to approve and uh, second by who was that? Second. Uh, by Councilman I'll Stevens. I'll be fine. Okay. Yes, I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any, any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Bob. We'll move on now to item four. A uh, bid award to JLP Carpentry for the replacement of the roof and windows at the Community Park concession stand. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, in the this year's fiscal year budget, the Parks and Recreation Department was allocated $30,000 to replace the roof and windows in the Community Park press box restroom <coughs> facility. Um, this building was built when I first got here in 2001 and the roof has served its time. The windows or the rollout type and the rollers have, have gotten to the point where they can't be opened. The window seals won't hold new handles, um, so they need to be replaced as well. Uh, we advertised for proposals twice, and we sent RFPs out to contractors, and we received three bids back, one from JLP Carpentry, one from um, Carolina Bay Construction, and one from Blueprint Construction. The one from Carolina Bay was not complete, or we deemed it incomplete, as it did not include the whole scope of the project. 
it only included the roof and not the windows and not the fascia. Um, so we kind of eliminated that one. JLP Carpenter came in at 35.5 and Blueprint came in at 75.4. Um, we are requesting an additional $5,500 from the general fund contingency, which would leave a balance of 227,613. Okay. Any questions? Can we use this guy before uh, that other concession stands? So now, haven't we used this guy? Yeah, we've used him and Blueprint Construction on other projects. Mm, they did, uh, JLP actually did the Girl Scout hood and did a great job. That's what I was thinking. <clears throat> questions comments again only question I have is about the funding is that what the finance department and manager you recommend for payment yes I make a motion to remove the approve the request second <laughs> have a, a motion and a, a, a second uh, to to approve um, all in favor ah. opposed all right. thank you sir All right, now we'll move on to um, our next item, consideration and request for approval to purchase a rescue truck for the fire department. Chief. Mayor, council members, uh, come before you tonight to get approval for a rescue truck that we've been working on for quite a while. As you've already heard several times tonight, materials have gone up, so have fire trucks. Unfortunately, uh, I am over budget. So I come before you tonight asking you to approve uh, a truck. I got three requests or three quotes. Uh, the, the high bid uh, and the second bid came in uh, pretty close to what we figured they were. I did have a third bid that came in uh, under budget but uh, did not uh, meet specifications um, and actually built, built on the wrong chassis. And that changed the price considerably. Uh, to be exact, he was, um, well, my calculations, he was about $216,000 under the, the uh, quote that we're requesting. Uh, so uh, I'm at this point uh, asking you to approve the, uh, the Fire Connections E1 truck that uh, is a million ten thousand. I'm at that point, it, uh, the quote is only good for 30 days. All three are 30 days. Um, I'll alert the council also. In your additional supplemental materials is the, the information that he is discussing with you. So if you haven't found it, it is in that supplemental materials. It looks like an additional action form for the fire, fire truck. Have we used this company in the past? Um, uh, this company? Fire connections and? This is an E1 fire truck. I'm not sure that, uh, yes, we have, I think we do have some E1 fire trucks, the old trucks. Mm -hmm. So they're the older trucks that we have as backups now. The frontline apparatus that you have now would have been your top bid of a million 75,000. That's Atlantic Coast. Mm -hmm. gotcha. uh, they came in considerably higher, but uh, well, compared to the second bid. Hmm. Now, when we say the only two manufacturers met the specifications, what was, can you elaborate so, a little bit yes. more so on that? We sent, uh, we sent the uh, information out, the, the, the um, count, uh, not council, but the uh, truck committee worked on getting all the uh, truck manufacturers to bid the same things. Uh, that way they knew what was what we were looking for and one of those was the chassis the chassis is a big part of the truck itself and just to give you some ideas where some of the you know, two hundred sixteen thousand dollars is coming from just on the chassis alone um, you're you're talking uh, seventeen thousand dollars right there um, we asked for airbags that's another sixteen thousand uh, the axle weights uh, combined there roughly uh, eight, nine, close to $10,000, and the weights were different. When he put it on a smaller chassis, that changed everything. That, 
right down to the compartment sizes. We asked for five compartments so we can house the equipment that we have now, including the air system, and then that he included only four. So there was, uh, I debated whether to put it in here, but it was a third bid, but he didn't meet specifications. So chassis, airbags, and? Uh, that's just a few. I have, I spent the weekend going through a list of items highlighting things that were not. There. That were not. That were not there. Different. Okay. I was just trying to understand why there's so much of a difference that, between. Yes, sir, I have. If I have we, a sheet. you know, between low, the, the lowest one, 794,000 as compared to 100. I'm pretty sure I'd bore you with my weekend going through specs, but I did. So basically they bid a smaller truck. Yes. Mm hmm it built a 94 inch um, chassis and or cab and we had requested a 100 inch cab that's for the body so what happened was everything changed the body changed and the chassis changed so it's not the same truck the uh, gvw changed too. It, yes sir that changed a tremendous amount okay. nope. And we even saved some money, you know, cutting back on the air compressor on this truck because the truck went up in price. So we had to pull the air compressor off. I mean, it would have been more than this. It would have been, been $75,000 more. And then we would, it, that's just for the compressor. And then we would have had to go into a tandem axle, which we were trying to avoid. So we, we cut some things out. So we're not going to come back and add that later. You cannot add, okay, come back and add that. Okay, because of that's you, you can't add that back into this right back here. Back to this truck. That's right. Okay, gotcha. All right. Any other questions, comments, uh, thoughts? Saying, seems like it's a broken record tonight. Mayor, I just have a couple questions for the chief. Thank you for your presentation. Um, in regards to serviceability this is uh, ideally of a 20-year piece of equipment is that the life of what we should be getting out of it uh you probably closer to 25 to 30 years i would hope and that's that's uh a professional opinion of these trucks with our prior purchase years ago when we went to the france model they've went out of business what is the business models of these companies are they sustainable so what i can tell you is all three that build on this truck are <coughs> under the rev corporation the Rev Corporation is the umbrella parent company. So they're all three the same. Uh, they just, they're independent. It's kind of like a, a car dealership owns several different brands. Okay. So <coughs> the Rev Group bought or acquired E1 several years ago, probably closer to 12 years ago. And they have continuously bought out other manufacturers. So in uh, last year, April of 2022, I think I was right. No, it was this year, April 2022. KME, which is the low bid in this particular uh, case, actually shut down two manufacturing facilities, one up in Pennsylvania uh, and another, it was Carbon County, Pennsylvania, and then there was uh, another plant that was closed down in Roanoke, Virginia. That's where they made their ladders at. So this company, not the one I'm recommending, but the, the low bid company, has closed down two plants, and I don't know what they're doing. Um, so I'm scared, just as like American the plants all over to me. And you're referring to Safe Industries? Safe Industries, yes, sir. I, and I have some research data if you guys were interested in it. I went ahead, just in case the, a question came up about them. They laid off uh, 388 employees at their main facility where they built their trucks and now they're I don't know where they're building them I know that the bodies are being built by another company and the chassis are being built they actually get a Spartan chassis which is a common chassis and then they send it to whoever to build it they would have to go to Colorado to be built as far as serviceability um, I don't know KME's serviceability they come out of uh, South Carolina um, Fire Connections is out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, so it's just right down the road. And they do have service technicians. I've verified all that. Road technicians. This also comes with a two-year warranty on the fire truck versus a standard one-year warranty. Chief, remind me again, and, and, and I know Councilman Scott, you kind of you mentioned it a minute ago, but our current truck is the American LaFrance, and it's a yes, 23 sir. years old. And you, yes, sir. you said that 
this truck ought to last us 25 to 30 years. I'm Should. Not, I mean, yeah. So, so what makes it different? I mean, I know American La France went out of business. We can't get the parts, right? right? But what, what type of special parts? Do, I mean, remind me as far as the American La France, like so as American far as La what France, can't we get for it, right? What can we get for, for the, the truck? No, what can't we get for that current truck? can't get the, the computer board that's inside of it. They no longer manufacture and not required to. So once that board goes out, that right. truck is deemed useless. So if, if if this if one of these companies, I mean, I'm assuming there's computer boards in it. Is it is there a difference though? Is it proprietary? Is no, that no, what it was? With the, no, with American La France, yeah. it was. Yeah, is that so correct? Was. And yes, what sir. we're saying is this one ought to last longer because we ought to be able to get yes, uh, aftermarket parts or whatever. I mean, what I'm. You can still service your ones you, of that, you, right? But yes, if it goes out, it's not proprietary. We should be able to get other parts to it. So that's kind of what goes into your thought about maybe lasting a little bit longer. Is that correct? Or that possible? is correct. So in the truck, they use what they call a VMUX system. I'm sorry, what? A VMUX. Okay. That VMUX system is the computer. It is not proprietary to any anyone. Mm -hmm. It uses nodes that go through. So you know, if anything goes bad, everybody can pretty much work on this. It's not, it's not proprietary. Gotcha. That's one reason why certain companies you kind of want to stay away from them because if you use their suspensions or whatever and it breaks down, you can't go to Napa, you can't go to Fleet Pride and get parts. You have to get it from them. They can charge you whatever they want to charge you for it. Gotcha. And this is a sole source dealership. So they build the body, they build the chassis. It's one company and it's not two. <clears throat> so what you're saying is, is this... I think I hear you saying the fire connection one is not proprietary and we can repair our own equipment after the warranty's gone off of it. Yes, yes, sir. Um, the Unlike parts, the La France was proprietary parts. That, that is correct. The, that computer board. Because I remember that very point with the smeal, and the smeal's not on here. The smeal was the top bid. Um, they were the highest. Okay. Well, that's a, is, okay. They were, they were a million seventy-five. So my question is the um, so if we if we approve it if we approve the bid it's still 24 months out. Uh, every bit of it. Um, right. So the question is though, I mean it's 24 months out. That's a long time. I mean we're in we're in danger ground already with the trucks we got. And one thing I know for sure the town of people in Smithfield expect certain things out of us in the town. And one of the things is fire protection. I mean they expect it. They, some things they just you can you know you might not want parks recreation but you want fire protection. I'm just telling you. Right? Yes, fire and police, you got to, which is obviously our biggest budget we got. Fire and police, because they're going to expect that out of us. So we got much choice, really, to make sure we do that. And I think we're in dangerous ground already. But my question is 24 months down the road. So the question is the, um, how are we insured that we're not going to, is there, do we lock that price in when we get in? So even though we know prices are going up in the next two years, through the roof in some cases, it's not going to affect the price of this vehicle. No, sir, it will not because I have it in writing that once the contract is signed, that is the price, and it will not go up, and you will not have to see me come back up here and ask you for an extension. So the key is really is we need to do as quick as possible before it goes up again. Yes, sir, I have. I mean, because we know it's going up again. There ain't no question about we've seen everything we've seen tonight. It's going up, 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 except our towers. <laughs> Yes, sir. Once I have this piece of paper signed with your approval, the price is locked in, and that is that. What's the resale value of the old rescue truck? If you could get $35,000 off of Gov deals, I think you'd be doing good. Whoever buys it's going to understand that the chassis, the, the, the actual chassis itself, is once it goes bad, it's no good. The only thing they could probably use off of it would be the body, and we could set a bid on it if we wanted to on, on gov.deals and set a minimum price and see what we get. Um, but the body is, you know, it's, it's okay. Somebody would have to take it off and remount it to another chassis, and then it's not necessarily going to fit the new chassis that you have. It's kind of like remounting ambulances. You know, you might can do it for... You know, a few years, but after a while, the chassis change and some, the wheels are going to be out of line or something. So I don't think you'll get much more than about 35. Uh, does Smithfield Selma have a fire engine? I'm sorry? Does Smithfield Selma have a fire engine? No, sir, they do not. So that there's something of. to consider, just saying. Because most of the other fire stations, most other fire programs 
do have fire in your arc. This, 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 this is a rescue truck. It's a rescue truck. truck. Oh, rescue truck. Yeah, yeah, this, this has no water on it except it's in the radiator. It does have water on it. Don't that truck got water on it? Only truck, the only water this truck right here has got on it is in the radiator. There's no pump on this truck. There no. is a pump. Oh, I'm talking about the old one. The, the old one, one. yes, well, there I'm is. About the old truck. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. I'm sorry. The That's old what truck. I'm talking about. I'm talking oh, about giving the old yeah, truck, yeah, not the new truck. Yeah. I ain't giving the new truck away. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. But now, you know, Triple S used to have one. Did they not still have they one? They don't have a truck. They have a fire engine. It's, it's, the old truck is not an one engine. sitting out there. Do they? No, but it does have a pump on it. It's a rescue with a pump. Yeah. But anyway, something to consider. Mayor, uh, my, my question to Mike, um, looking at this, there's two things. Um, if we approve the 135000 increase from budget, again, would we take this out of the ARP money? And with that, if it's a build phase, do they give you any advantage to prepay and it's worth the town? And would there be a performance bond? <coughs> the, uh, the prepay is not a good deal for the town. Um, you're, you're putting your money at risk to start with, a higher risk than you would need to. And right now with the uh, interest rates what they are and seeing them even go up more in the next two years, you're going to make more money just leaving that cash sit in the bank than you're going to save by pay, prepaying for this okay. truck. So I would not recommend that option. Um, there, there won't need to be a performance bond or anything like that. If we don't prepay, yeah. you got a contract. That's right. You only want to do a bond if you're going to prepay anything. Yeah. So, that's so that, that's not an issue. Um, to pay for it, we, we did set aside 875000 of American Rescue Plan Act funds. So you're talking about the difference. You've got two years to decide what to do with that. You can continue to take the rest out of American Rescue Plans. You can loan the rest. Um, or you can use fund balance for it, or we can try to, over the course of two years, put some of that money away mm -hmm. and save it from, you know, in the budget process. Um, yeah. So we, I don't think that's a decision you have to make tonight. Um, I would leave that earmark for that 875000 on there that's already been approved in the budget. Uh, the rest of it, I, I would have further discussion in the budget process about how to pay for it. But I just don't want that to be an oversight of money that we were agreeing to spend that we spend again later. Yeah. So, so it has to be accounted for. I understand. So, yeah. if you if you and Greg are okay with that, I I, I I don't disagree. But I just don't think that. I mean, if something happens, you know, we need to have that in writing. Yes. You know, we're planning. It's it's restricted funds now, so to speak, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. this. Because uh, we have to pay the bill when it comes. So that's right. Six hundred and twenty days. So, but you need to have the contract back in thirty days. Yes, sir. I'll have, if uh, if y'all approve it, I'll have it signed uh, this week, and that locks us in. The, the price is good for thirty days, and you don't have to pay anything on this truck until you receive it. Okay. Mr. Mayor, make a recommendation we approve the bid. Second. A fire connection for one million ten thousand five hundred eighty dollars. <laughs> Zero zero cents to be financed through the AARP, a, 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 R, P, a, R, P, a, and then additional funds as needed um, when the time comes. Okay. A, a motion and a second by Councilman Rabel to <coughs> to approve. But may real quick, um, can you get us a copy of that contract? Because it's not in here. Mm -hmm. Atlantic. I just think it needs to be on the record. Yeah, I got it. Well, I got it right here. It, I mean, it's, I'll give it to you. I thought it was in there. No, the only one you have in here is the Atlantic Coast. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it should have been. I gave it to Shannon to put in. She, it may have got uh, lost. Mm. Sorry, Mary, I just wanted to. But if you don't have it, I, I have a copy right here. Y'all may have, I don't. Would y'all? I don't have it. I don't have it. No, it's not. We have my, this my, my mistake. There we'll, get, we'll get that to you. Okay. Right I just want to make sure it's on the record. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. Huh? All right. Um, and motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Come. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Motion. Thank you, Chief. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Chief. 
Um, let's see, our next uh, item is consideration and request for approval to adopt the 2023 Town Council meeting schedule. That's Mike, but pretty straightforward, I guess. We get a couple of. It is. Um, this is on page 140 and 141 of your budget or your agenda packet. Um, normally, all of our meetings are on the first Tuesday of each month. We're recommending to stay with that. Um, with the exception of July, July 4th happens to be the first Tuesday, so we're recommending to move that to the following week of July 11th. And then uh, in November, November 7th is the first Tuesday, and that happens to be Election Day, so we're asking to move that one week to November 14th. The only other date in question was in September. Um, the uh, September 4th, the Monday is Labor Day. I'll just draw that to your attention. We're still recommending leaving the meeting on the 5th, but if we have too many council members taking vacation extended time on the 4th, you may consider moving that to the 12th. Okay. All right. Any questions or have a motion to adopt that schedule? Mr. Mayor, real quick, over the, <clears throat> over the last two years, um, and I don't know what the new police chief coming in, what it's going to be like, but, I mean, you even talked about it this year, but normally the first Tuesday in, in August is National Night Out, and, I mean, I just always think, you know, it's, it's good to be out there and support our law enforcement. I think, you know, coming in next year, we'll have a, you know, new police chief. I don't know what his idea is going to be, but, um, you know, just for the last few years, you know, this is – Kind of one of them things that, you know, they had it, but we had a council meeting. But I see we're already moving a couple of dates anyway. Um, but it's just that first night in, first Tuesday in August, I wish we can consider that, moving that, especially if we are going to have a national night out. I support moving it to the 8th. I remember we talked about it last time. I support the 8th. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Thursday. Thursday. 8th is the 3rd. 8th is August. 8th is Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. We're going to hit the June. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I'm on my own. So, we, um, any issues from that from your No, I, I see no complications with that from, our, from the staff point standpoint. Okay. All right. I, I, mean, I, I don't have any issues with it. Anybody else? Everybody good with that? I'll just say. All right. I um, have a motion then to approve the schedule as recommended by staff with the addition, with the one additional change of the August meeting to the 8th. I'm, I'll make a motion to approve that request. Okay. <coughs> motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. We are now set for 2023. All right. Um, now moving on to council members' comments. Um, I'll start by first and foremost. Wishing Councilman Lee a happy birthday today, sir. Oh, uh, nice, nice way to spend your birthday. Um, couldn't, couldn't be with a better crowd today, I guess. Uh, uh, but uh, happy birthday to you. Um, if you were able to come out to the, to the tree lighting, um, that was a great event put on by Downtown Development and Parks and Rec. So, uh, Gary, to your staff and Downtown Development, um, it was a, that was a great event. Um, town, looks, town looks good uh, to, to your department. Uh, to, Sanitation. I saw the guys as I was leaving, and they were coming in and uh, getting ready to start start cleaning up. And uh, so, um, just a just a fantastic job all around. Police department as well, um, Captain Grady. Um, I thought it was a lot of folks out there. You know, as from a production standpoint and everything <laughs> else. And um, so, just. Uh, to all the staff and everything, it was just a, a, a fantastic event that was well well attended that night, and actually had some <laughs> cold weather. It start, uh, started to feel like a little little like Christmas out. So, um, so fantastic job there. So, uh, that's really all that I have. Um, anyone else have anything? 
Hey, I just real brief, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Um, I know we're celebrating festive things in town here, and um, just want to remember those that are less fortunate than ourselves, and um, anytime you can reach a hand out and be a support in the community and help others, I think it's important we don't forget what the true meaning of the season is, and it's about Christ's birthday. So. Absolutely. Anyone I want to make a comment that uh, we are seeing some activity on our drone park. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we are having the, the racing league. People are going out there on a regular basis and actually having some races out there. So uh, we're excited about that. We are so, I mean, that's, that's a purpose for it, give people opportunities. So um, um, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. You never know what you see with the drone. You mm-hmm. never know what you're going to see with the drone. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I got a few comments I'm going to say just real quick. Um, it was just ironic. Ann Temple was here tonight. Uh, I grew up with her brother Will from kindergarten all the way up. Um, you know, played sports together um, right here in the town of Smithfield. Um, she did mention Coach Carl Spragans, uh, the late Coach Spragans. Um, you know, they're going to be um, at Triple S this Friday night unveiling uh, his basketball court. They're going to name the court after him. Um, you know, uh, which is, you know, Will and I, we both played for Coach Braggins, um, you know, during our time uh, through high school. But um, even as Miss Temple um, started talking or whatever, she started talking about Martin Luther King and, you know, talking about um, degrading character. And that, that definitely, that, that kind of sparked where I'm at tonight. Um, last month, um, I got a couple of uh, forwarded text messages, um, and they was from the chairman of the planning board, who's also a contractor and uh, was a school board candidate. I'm going to read this real quick. Some of y'all already heard it, but I'm going to read this. I haven't seen it. I will look at it in a minute, but I can't imagine what Marlon Lee put up there. He is as racist against white people as anyone on this earth. Marlon and myself have had numerous run-ins over situations and he went as far as trying to get me fired from a contract from the town of Smithfield and he tried to get me kicked off the planning board for the town of Smithfield. He is a great A number one ass. And that's what I received um, probably about three weeks ago. Coming from somebody that represents the town of Smithfield, is getting paid by the town of Smithfield, I've been in the Johnson County public school system for 22 years this year. I teach white people. I coach white people. I mentor white people. I heard the word pandemic tonight. I was the president of the Smithfield Progressive Men's Club when we opened up our building during the pandemic and we had COVID testing. White people came over there. We didn't turn white people away. And I'm just appalled just to hear something for somebody that represents the town of Smithfield. I go back, and I said it again when it happened, back when the riots happened in Raleigh. I was out in Smith Collins Park just chilling. I got a phone call. My nickname, 6ix9ine. Is everything all right in Smithfield? We'll come down there right now. And with no police officer, with nobody, with nobody, wouldn't have known what went on. There's not a minority business that sits up here on Market Street. Market Street would have been tore up. But with my racist against white people self, that's what I get said. There were some racist comments that came out of Chick-fil-A. And guess what? I had police officers calling me wanting to know when the riot was going to be at, at Chick-fil-A, when they thought it was going to be on a Wednesday. But actually, it was going to be on a Sunday. Why? What time does Chick-fil-A open on Sunday? But with my racist self, 
I got an issue with that. I personally got an issue with that. When I first got on the council, about a year later, I got a text from somebody calling me a nigga. A month later, I get a thank you letter. Oh, they had to watch a video. I got a problem with that. I got issues with <laughs> I got issues with it, but you talk about me, because I know who I am. I know who I am. And when people call me out, it's easy to go on Facebook, easy to do podcasts, all that stuff. But I got issues with it. I've been in Smithfield. Today is my 49th birthday. I missed my basketball game tonight because I wanted to get this out. I got issues with this stuff. Mr. Manager, it's in your hands to deal with this. Two months ago, we had a Parks and Rec team that came out here and was going to speak on the issues of Parks and Rec. And you got the director to go out there and deflect it. I know what went on. I know exactly what went on. There's issues in Parks and Rec. There's issues in the police department. And I come to the council meetings to talk about it. To put it in your face. There's issues in this town. But when I look around, I don't see people that look like me. So you probably don't think it's an issue. But there's issues in this town. And it's up to you to get them right. I raised my hand when we got rid of the last manager. I make a motion to get rid of you. It's your job. I'm not scared of nobody in this town. Retaliate. Do what you got to do. But there's issues in this town. And that's what I got elected for, to come out here and fight for people. Black, white, green, it don't matter. But I'm tired of being called out of my name. And then people are thinking it's okay. I'm tired of it. That's all I got to say. I'm tired of it. All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone well, else? Anyone else? Come. Mr. Manager, turn it over to you, sir. Councilman Lee, thank you for your comments. I, I don't need some action. I don't need thank yous. It's action. Cause you know it's here. I don't need none of that. Okay. So just one I don't need it. Uh, let's I don't need it. Marlon. Tell him this, don't say my name. Just settle down. Settle down. Let's, we got it. Mr. Manager. Yeah. The only thing I have, Mr. Mayor, is uh, just a reminder that we have the Christmas parade downtown tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Downtown, our uh, town hall will be open. So please stop in, pick up cookies and hot chocolate while you're here. And, um, or not tomorrow, Thursday. Thursday I'm Thursday. sorry. Thursday night. December 8th, Thursday. And the uh, SSSS football team is going to be the Grand Marshals for, for that parade. So. Okay. Great event for a great cause. Gotcha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, we do need to go into uh, closed session, pursue it to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11, Section A, 5, and 6. Um, do I have a motion to go into closed session? So I move, Mr. Mayor. The motion, second. do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? All right. Uh, Any opposed? We're going to close session at this time. Thank you.